and we're live. This is Keep It 100 podcast show. My special guest, Mr. Chosen One, <laughs> aka Element J222. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir How are yeah. we doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here right now. For sure. Appreciate you uh, for joining me again. Thank you for having me. For sure. Keep it 100 podcast show. This is live on Facebook right now. And eventually it'll go to all, all our other platforms as well. So um, let's let's jump right into it, man. Let's go. First eventful question of the day that I have for you that's going to go across the screen really quick. And there we go. How did you get into music? How did I get into music? So music was kind of always in my household. Well, I had divorced parents, so it was more so in my dad's household. My mom mm. would have music going and stuff too, but she was not like so much into it. Um, I definitely got my music genes from my dad's side of the family, even like his father, my grandfather. I never met him, so I don't really refer to him like that, but he was in a band and that's where my dad wanted to do music because of him and stuff. So my dad always would play, he always had like, um, he would play a lot of ethical instruments, like the sitar, because he's uh -huh. Persian, he's Iranian, so he played the sitar a lot, or like these like ethical uh, string instruments and stuff. And I'd watch him play. He would play the piano or the keyboard and stuff, and make music on there. And it kind of just caught my eye, or not my eye, my ear. And um, mm -hmm. so I started kind of messing it with like that too. And I think I was around maybe five, six years old. My mom's boyfriend at the time, back then, he was a drummer, and I watched him play drums and stuff, and I was like. Yo, that's fucking sick. So it made me want to start playing drums. Got me a drum set for Christmas. And then from there, I just start playing the drums and learning things. And then kind of just kept going up. Uh, I started listening to rock music originally. That's what I grew up on was like rock music, alternative music, folk music, things like that. And then I was living, where was I living? I was living out west in Long Island. I moved uh -huh. out further east when I was around seven, eight years old. And everybody where I had moved to was listening to hip hop and rap music. So. That was my first time ever hearing it. And I remember I was checking my email. I was like eight years old, checking my email, <laughs> probably like for a game subscription or something. And I remember on the homepage it was on Yahoo and I see uh, Pop Bottles by Lil Wayne featuring Birdman. Oh, and wow. I was like, I was, it was a music video. And I was like, huh, what is this? I don't know. Clicked on it and then the music starts playing and I start hearing like all the synthesizers and like the deep voice effect that they did and shit and like the music video and the trap drums coming in and the 8 away hitting and like my mind had an orgasm and exploded and i was like <laughs> i was like yo what the fuck and then from there so i was like i found out who lil wayne was and then that's how i found out about hip-hop and rap music and that's when i started like making beats on the on the yamaha keyboards and like playing with the metronome for three minutes straight each melody each thing each snare hi-hat just making beats and stuff so it's been a while it's been like since i was a young and really young for sure. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, do you have a? Did you have like any like influencers, like far as like artists or like a mm -hmm. family member or something like that you looked up to that that made yeah. you like get into it more? No, definitely. So, like I said before, my mom's boyfriend he played the drums, so he's the one who kind of like introduced me to playing the drums, and I kind of like I think I just had a natural groove for everything musically because I just feel like that's my gift and that's what I was born with. And then, so when I started being introduced with it in this lifetime, I started just picking up fast, but he was definitely somebody I looked up to because he's the one who put me on the drums and he would like help me practice and teach me things and teach me certain, you know, drum patterns and things like that. And like, tell me, okay, do this pattern for like half an hour, get it down good and then we'll move, move on to something else. So he was a big help. My dad was definitely a big help because he's always just supported my um, interest in the music. And he would also show me how to like, make melodies on the keyboard and play along with the songs that I'm listening to and stuff. And the people who I listened to, who I looked up to, Lil Wayne was the GOAT to me because sure. he was the first person I found and he was just, his music was just crazy. But a lot of like the young money people, even like Birdman in the beginning when he was rapping, mm -hmm. I fucked with a lot. Drake's definitely one of them. Uh, I look up to J. Cole a lot. Uh, Ludacris and them, like Lloyd Banks back in the day. It's like yeah. early childhood stuff. So those are like, even like boozy, like crazy, um, the whole G unit, 50 Cent, the game, all of them, Eminem a little bit too. I wasn't the biggest Eminem fan, but some songs I definitely liked. So definitely that whole era growing up. And then just as, you know, hip hop kept evolving, I just kept keeping up with it. And it was just, uh, just kept inspiring me. Just kept loving it. Kept doing it. For sure. Yeah. 
Speaking of that last point you just made, uh, the M and M point. Like I, I actually I have a homie that um, that lives in New York, and he's like, he was like, yo, like, no, no one listens to like M and M. So like, it caught my eye when you said it, and I was hmm. like, interesting. Huh. Like, people, people listen to him, but I think, I think especially more so now, people don't listen to him as much. I think it was more of like a back in the day kind of thing. But he is <laughs> without a doubt a legend. Like, for sure. He's, he, like I think he deserves to, the whole top five list. I feel like there should be like three versions of it because there's like definitely just like a lot of artists. Like there's like a handful, maybe even like ten, mm-hmm. and people like people get like no, like these are top five or these are top five. Oh Kanye too, of course. Like how could I forget Kanye? Like when Stronger dropped and like that was fucking insane. Never heard anything yeah, like that amazing. before. And I just you know dived into his whole catalog and watched him become who he became. But uh, yeah, for sure. I'm already. Funny that you spoke of that top five. There will be a question later about that. So uh, okay, so, so I'll start putting my list together. <laughs> I, I always have a hard time answering that question. I get like nervous. I'm like, yo, what if I make the wrong answer? But then I'm like, there's no wrong answer, you know? Yeah, because it's your personal, yeah. your personal five. Yeah. But the way we do it, we don't do a one through five. We just go. This is your five that you're gonna. No rock specific with. order or anything like. No. No yeah. one through five or anything like that. Okay. It's, yeah, I think it's easier uh, that way. Yeah, so it's like pass or current. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, okay. Okay. All I right. So for sure, when to get that in the air. Um, right. I'm going to move on to my next question I have for you. Put that on the screen, so people don't think we're still talking about the first one. Um, what does being an artist mean to you? Hmm. It means being able to express my soul in the form of music in whatever way comes to my mind and in my heart, literally, and be a, a way to express my truth, who I am, why I'm here. It's a way to help people, inspire them, strengthen people, heal people, help them through what they're going through. It's like, it's a superpower, honestly. It's like being an artist is really a superpower because the power of the pen and then the power of your voice and Mm-hmm. You being able to speak and then whether it be in the form of rapping with the cadence or singing with a melody and put something meaningful behind that or just even the sound, the talent, the way it's able to just strike people's minds and hearts and like leave them starstruck or leave them like, wow, like that was amazing. You're really talented and like have them feeling some type of way and energize them. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's like literally a superpower and it's very energizing and uplifting to people in the world. and. I am someone who wants to use that for good and who wants to use that to actually help people and not just like, you know, make songs about like the same old stuff all the time and flexing my shit and talking shit and then like treating my fans and the people who support me like shit and stuff. Like I'm someone who is like, I want to actually connect and engage with the people who support me and then actually just help them, just help heal the world, make this world a better place. So to me, that's what it is. For sure. So you had a moment like that when you first heard Little Wayne, right? Is that like a moment yeah. for you? <laughs> yeah, man. My heart exploded, bro. My heart <laughs> and mind were like, like, what the f- I've never heard anything like that in my life. Like, just the synthesizers and the sounds like that they use and at the time. And then, the, like, the trap drums, the 808s, it just sounded crazy. And I think the cinematic feel of the music video, like, it was, like, championship basketball game or whatever it was. And, like, the pot and ball. It was just, I don't know, it was just something about it. It was a vibe. It was, like, the fashion, too, got me, the energy, the whole aura of everything. Like, the braggadocious, like, talk your shit. This shit sounds fly. Like, the whole nine, it was just, like, just struck me in a different way. And it was just, like, I just, it was like a drug. I was addicted ever since then. Literally. <laughs> Couldn't get enough. <laughs> yeah. But in a good way, of course. That was a moment to uh, be in music at that point, for sure. Well, for as far as listening, like, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a lot different than it is now. There was only like a, a handful, of select few people who were like were really out there doing it. And now it's like there's so many people. It just like there's always new names come up. Like, yo, you ever heard of this guy? It's pretty huge. I'm like, never heard of him. Like, <laughs> so much, so much going on. Not in a bad way, of course. Just because yeah. there's so much going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy. Especially all these new artists. It was like, who's that? And then you hear it and you'd be like, oh. Oh damn, that's fire, bro! Like, where where have I been at that I have not heard that actually? Right, exactly, yeah. Sure. Speaking of um, inspiring, my next question is more so about the track you just dropped, actually. Mm. 
So um, it's good time. It's good time. I'm interested to hear how what inspired you to drop this. So I'm gonna put this next question up, okay. and then we could just go into more detail that way. Okay. What inspired you to come out with the new track you got? Like I heard it and yeah, pretty fire. Appreciate it. Yeah. So beyond myself, that track. That's that track really came from my soul. That came from my soul, and that came from me overcoming a lot of dark shit that I was facing within myself just throughout life. Like everybody deals with their things. Everybody's on a journey. Everybody, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people in this lifetime deal with like some kind of struggle and shit. And they have to overcome it. They have to overcome themselves. They might have to overcome the way they think, the way they feel, their environment, people who are around, like addictions if they have. So that song was just like a message to people. And also just to myself to like remember your power remember your worth remember who you are that's why like in the hook i say like uh woke up in this life now i know it's my creation because i woke up to the fact that i'm co-creating my reality mm -hmm. with the abundant with the help of the abundant universe you know what i'm saying like i'm not just out here mindlessly living my life subconsciously getting fucked acting like a victim and wondering why like why me and stuff like i had to wake up and realize like no a lot of this shit in my life i have attracted to me or and whatever it is i'm like it's a very spiritual song there's a lot of different meanings it's it's be about overcoming yourself it's about waking up to the fact that you're more than just like this human like you're actually creating your life and you're connected to something deeper it's about reincarnation because i say uh been through many lives to get to this destination but then i also say there ain't no destination that's miscommunication which is about like everything is in the present moment so there's a lot of meanings it's, it's real deep um, whoever's watching this, if you haven't listened and those things are down your alley, definitely go listen to it because you're, you're going to have a lot of things that resonate and a lot of lines and you're going to just gonna be like, whoa, like, holy shit. It's like a lot of like working on your soul, working on yourself. Like it's old things like that. Very spiritual for sure. For sure. Will there yeah. be a music video? Uh, probably. Yeah, I would say so. I just don't know when I'm like, right mm -hmm. now I'm working on the next release and then I'm kind of just doing that. Um. I already I shot a music video earlier this year for a song that I didn't put out yet. I was supposed to put out a bit earlier, but change of plans. Still have that music video, but generally music videos are something that I'm working on more, or even mm -hmm. just visuals in general, trying to get more visuals out. Okay, for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, and one more I want to talk about that song a little bit. Like okay. for a little bit, probably like for like another minute or so. Sure. Like for <laughs> that song, like how long did it take you to like come up come up with it was it like something quick or or was or was it the track just sitting for a minute and then you it was a one day it? song it was a one day <laughs> song <laughs> it was i was on my way to the studio it was like 12 38 noon and i'm listening to beats so i had nothing planned well obviously i knew i'm gonna go to the studio do something create something but i just didn't know what so i'm listening to beats on the way there to figure that out and i hear this beat come on it's produced by vendor who just recently got signed to internet money taz heller nick mira all of them and I didn't even know he was on internet money at the time. I don't think he was, but whatever. So I hear the song. I mean, I hear the beat and I'm like, this shit just sounds crazy. It just sounds powerful. And then the beat drops and then instantly I just start singing, kind of like mumbling the sound of the hook. I was like, woke up in this life. Now I know it's my creation. I had to get it right. So those first two long lines just came out. And then I was like, all right. And then I just started getting the butterflies. I was like, yeah, we're running with this one. So I got here and I kind of just, kept singing the hook out loud and writing to it as I go. And then I just kept going the whole time. It was like, I really only took maybe a break or two to like eat or like breathe, get my, get my breath back. But that was like, start to finish. It was like half a day. So it was like from 12 to let's say 12, literally at night, okay. start to finish, mix, master, everything done, had it. Right. But this was like back in April. So I didn't just drop it though recently though. For sure. So there was yeah. no writer's block involved when you, when you wrote that? You yeah, no. Through. <laughs> I was channeling the source like a motherfucker. It was just coming through. I actually hardly even wrote to it. It was really mostly just me freestyling everything and maybe writing down a line or two as I go and then just either punching it in and out line for line every couple lines or sometimes I go like a few lines, but everything was just, I was just channeling this energy and it was just coming to me, for sure. which is how I've been doing most of my stuff actually as of lately. And it's been making everything, it's been changing the game pretty crazy. I mean, yeah, live up to, you got to live up to your... Uh... Or chosen one name, right? Yeah, it's insane, bro. <laughs> and I'm for real too. Like I've been practicing freestyling like a motherfucker, and like I just it's not so recently where I'm like I'm actually getting good, and I can 
stay consistent bar after bar and i'm not just mumbling mm-hmm. shit and it's making sense like juice world someone that's another one taking it back to what we were saying before that's like one of my biggest inspirations of this generation uh-huh. just sound wise talent wise just his ability to just be so connected to his gift and the divine in my opinion because like how the fuck you just do that like, you don't just do that that's a gift that's like something different so that's definitely something that i aspire to be like in my own essence you know what i'm saying for sure yeah. Great insight on that one. Um, Appreciate it. Far as far far as uh the song, like that, I read in your profile you're a producer too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I should start producing first. Okay, I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. Okay. So, like, so you produced that whole track and everything. You just did everything yourself, or that one I you? engineered it. I didn't produce okay. it though. Vendor, uh, who's on internet money, he produced it. Okay, I just I recorded it, mixed it, mastered it, wrote it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're truly the definition of an artist. Like you literally like are doing like literally yeah. almost everything. Pretty much, if not yeah. everything, because sometimes because I have plenty of songs where I produce too, and then I do all the other things. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The only thing is that I don't really do that much or like cover art. I like to leave mm-hmm. that for more so like. A different kind of artistic mind because i can come up with like simple things but nothing crazy i don't have photoshop or anything like that and i just feel like that's where i like to collaborate it's when i'm i'm working with a cover artists and stuff like that sure yeah. all right sounds good um we are now going to hop into this producer question that i have okay i saw it on your profile and i was like i was like okay i'm asked this question but i didn't want to be wrong at the same time so i was like all right i'm just gonna go with it Okay. Um, we're going to put the question up. What do you like most about being a producer? A lot of things. There's a lot of good things about it. Um, I feel like it's such a easy way to escape reality. Sometimes you just sit down mm-hmm. and start cooking some beats and make some stuff. It's kind of similar to an artist. It's a, it's of course you're expressing your uniqueness. You're expressing the sounds you're hearing in your head, whatever you're hearing, you're bringing out to life. Um, I think I just like the freedom to it. Like you could do whatever you want. You could create whatever you want. You could be different. You could create a whole new sound no one's ever heard before. I could sample my AirPods, like hitting this table and do something crazy to it. And I just made like a new perk or something or a new clap or hi-hat. So I think there's definitely a lot of power in it. And um, you could just create something out of nothing and just express who you are. It's just a whole nother way of doing that. And as being an artist too, it's even better because I can make a beat and then I can make a song and I don't have to like, reach out, which is nothing wrong with, but it's just about being self-sufficient, I think. Oh, that's a true definition of an artist, technically, right? Like, that you can yeah, like, so. a little bit of everything. Or even uh, a producer, like the true definition of a, of a producer is not even just like making beats or making the beat. Mm-hmm. It's also being like, being able to be in the studio with an artist and like help them while they're making the song and like help them with their flow and how to, you know, correlate certain words and per- put certain sentences together that make sense and fit the beat because as i'm making a beat i'm thinking about how a song's going to sound on it and uh-huh. i also i record a few people too so now I'm, when i'm recording them and let's say they're using one of my beats i'll help them out i'll be going back and forth and i'm like yo say this like that or like when this part comes in you notice how it sounds like this like do this with that you know what i'm saying that's also being a producer is like you're not just you didn't just make the beat you're helping actually produce the track too for sure so there's like a, a little bit of a separation there. So that's another good thing about it. Okay. It's funny that you say that. Was that I always wondered how that goes. Like when yeah. uh, when a producer and an artist is in the studio at the same time and say if they're yeah. like listening, they're playing the song back. Like how do you know when to tell them like to say this or say that, yeah. or that before that? You'll like, know because like it's never a pushy thing. It should always be a very naturally flowing, coherent thing. So it shouldn't be like you're telling them what to do. It should be like, let's say they're coming across a point where maybe they're having a hard time saying this line or the way they wrote it down and heard it in their head is in the way that it's coming out. So that's where I could be like, all right, I see what you're trying to do. Like maybe like take out this word and do this or do that. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it just, it just being more valuable, being able to be more valuable and help the track get produced and help the artists get out what they're trying to get out yeah okay that actually that actually transitions into my next question that i have okay which is what is what is it what is it like day-to-day as being a producer like what's the data what goes into the day-to-day process of uh, being a producer? 
definitely make sure you're getting good sleep, proper sleep. <laughs> uh, because you could really have some really long nights in the studio because you're cooking some stuff up and you don't want to stop and because you're making something insane. So definitely a lot of long nights and late starts to the day or early starts to the day and, you know, late nights, whatever, the, whatever. Um, definitely make sure you're not just in the studio all day for too long. Like try to have balance, like go out, let's say go into nature, go get inspired, go get some exercise and live like a normal person, do normal people mm -hmm. things too. You know what I'm saying? And then to me, it'll help your craft when you get into the studio and you want to start producing and making music, even just in general, in any kind of way. Um, a lot of caffeine, a lot of coffee. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, coffee and making beats is, like, an insane combo. Like, I can't, like, what was it, a few months ago, I went through this, like, little phase where I wasn't even really making songs that much. I just felt drawn to cook up a lot of beats. I cooked mm -hmm. up, like, 20 guitar beats, like, crazy guitar beats in a week and just brewed mad coffee. And I was up till, like, 2 a.m., like, every night, just, like, two, three cups of coffee cooking out beats like one after another one after another so that was pretty fucking cool coffee definitely just helps get the juices flowing the creative mind going just inspires you um be around more people listen to new things be open to hearing new things so you don't get stuck in a box and then feel like you got beat block or whatever it is but um yeah i don't know so it's, it's an interesting question overall i would just say make sure you're taking care of yourself you're getting proper rest have balance with the shit and um when you're producing, when you're doing your thing, just stick to it. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged if it's not coming to you right away. You know, For sometimes sure. you just got to sit down with it. All right. Um, so I noticed that you said, uh, what's that called? It's like writer's block, but what's that called for producers? Is it like? I guess beat block. Have you ever had that? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, like how did... So do you just get stuck on a certain it's, part of a beat? It's not even that you get stuck. It just like, it just starts feeling unfulfilling. It's like, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing to you. You're not feeling, it's not like a cooperative thing. It almost feels like you're forcing certain things or sounds where you end up making the same beat that you made 20 times before because mm -hmm. you just can't think of anything else. Something else is really coming to your mind like that. And then it kind of feels stale. It's kind of like a watered down experience of like, actually experiencing that, that that like creative passion and bliss and love for what you're doing and it really inspiring the fuck out of you and like giving you the chills running through your veins like yo this sounds insane so it's kind of like that writer's block i would say is a bit harder because it's like actual words and things that you got to write down if you're writing or if you're doing it out loud so it's like beat block you can kind of get away with it more i wouldn't even call it beat block it's kind of just like maybe feeling a bit slowed down and uninspired unenergized kind of thing because I could have beat block, but I could still make a beat. It just might not be that good, mm -hmm. you know, because of how I was feeling. So the, would you say it depends more on of how the producer is feeling that day or? Yeah, it could be a lot of different things. It could be how you're feeling that day. It could be if you're just tired and your brain isn't really working like that and you just need some rest. It could be because you've been overdoing it or like not overdoing it but now you've reached your threshold and you're burnt out because you just picked up like 30 beats that week and you mm -hmm. still want to keep trying to bang it out but nothing's coming to you and you're trying to force it that's like okay it's fine take a break go live some life go do other things you know what i'm saying so it can be a lot of different things for sure all right yeah. that, that's that's a great uh definition of that so Appreciate i'm it. sure you'll help some people out with Hell yeah. getting that writer's block or beat and block. it happens it's natural like Sometimes we can get a little, like, we can beat ourselves up and think, like, damn, I don't really got it. Like, no, like, it's part of the process. You have good days, you have bad days. The days where you can crank out so many beats and produce so many tracks, record so many things. And you have days where you get, like, maybe one or two and or you don't get shit. And so it just, it's just part of the process. For sure. Yeah. And I have a question about, like, making a beat. So sure. when you make the beat, is it? Is it like a series, a series or a combination of, I guess, things you put together or like what goes into actual making like an actual beat? Yeah, I would say that's pretty much it's a good way to describe it. It's definitely like because you start with one thing. Let's say you start with your melody, your first melody, mm -hmm. which is like the main, the lead melody. And then after that, you're like, all right, now let me add the bass notes to it, the deeper notes to give it more body. And then you're like, all right, now let me add like 
some ambient one shots and like atmospheric things that just kind of come in here and there. So it's kind of like, it's definitely like, it's, it all comes together. It's almost like, I don't know, baking a cake or making a cake or. That's a good like analogy buy, actually. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. A, or like you buy a desk or something and you have to build it and you have all these like little different parts and stuff. So it's kind of like that. It's, it's just, you start layering a bunch of sounds and things on top of each other and then you have a beat literally. For sure. Yeah. All right. Um, one more question on that topic. Like, okay. Here's a question. It's not going to go on the board or anything because we're still on this topic. But okay. ha have you ever been like, say you've been you're in a studio, right? And then you have an artist in there with you, and you just randomly make this beat, and he starts nodding his head hard and going off to it. Have you ever, have you had a situation like that? Uh I think so. Yeah, I've had situations like that, or. Or let's say we were making beats and then like mm -hmm. we take a break or whatever, or I'm and I might just pull up one that I've had and one that I didn't even think much of and I play it and then like they just start fucking with it having to like yo, like load that one up or whatever, just like yo, like I fuck with this and send me this and so definitely it happened like very unexpected. A lot of shit happens in unexpected ways like that in music, I feel like. So the things that you might not think were gonna hit end up hitting, the things that you were holding on to so tightly and that you wanted to put out, like didn't hit, you know what I'm saying? So but I've had, I've definitely had experiences with artists in the studio where I'm making a beat and they're just like, they're just in the zone. I'm looking at them and I can just see them. They're on their notepad, they're writing, and they're just like this. I'm like, okay, I know I'm doing my job right now. We've got a chemistry going, yeah. it's going well. I'm not like, fuck, they're not looking at me like, yo, this kid's ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm grateful. Just got to have a good ear, you know? For sure. Um, yeah. So when... So when you're working with these artists, like, have you ever had anyone that doesn't write anything down and they just go straight into like full freestyle mode on it? Or oh yeah, hundred percent. Something like that. I I'm one of those. I do that yeah. too. <laughs> Be cool. It's more so now though, because it just I don't know. It's more fun. And like, what I'll do is I'll actually put my voice memos on on my phone and I'll just leave it in a corner of the room somewhere. And mm -hmm. I'll just start rapping, freestyling, singing out loud as like, let's say one of my boys who produces making the beats. Like there's plenty of times where he's sitting there making the beat and I'm just literally rapping, freestyling the entire time. Writing to some stuff as I go to, like I've written down hooks as my boys making the beat or I've wrote down a verse as my boys making the beat. And then after he exports the beat and everything, get the MP3 file, we load it up and I'll lay it down, record it. And then like, we'll keep going. So definitely, yeah. For sure. I heard stories of that. I just never heard it from like someone I actually talked to. Like yeah. I hear it if I'm watching something on YouTube or something, and I'm like, I wonder if that's really, if it's what that's really, what that vibe is really like. Like I was it depends. Like, it depends on the energy in the room and how good the person is, I guess. So it's like because the person could start rapping and freestyling, but it's ass, or a person could start rapping and freestyling if somebody's producing and suddenly that becomes the main attention it's like yo just don't even fuck with b anymore just keep it rolling and we're gonna film him free song because he's going crazy right now kind of like the juice world shit that happens all the time like yeah in the studio so it's definitely interesting it's, it's a lot of fun actually for sure i'm sure yeah. i'm sure that happens a lot with little wayne as well I'm, I'm yeah definitely there. yeah okay i just wanted to know that because i was just curious i was like i wonder how that how that is yeah, hell yeah yeah definitely sure. All right. Um, now the type of question that I'm going to ask you is is more so like on like improving like as an artist. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to put the question artist and producer. Let me let me add that. Um, okay. But I'll put the question up. How have you gotten better this year as a artist and a producer this year? Leaving my comfort zone and having more fun with this shit and not feeling like it's a chore and a task. So mm -hmm. I'll be honest, like, I don't remember, probably the last time I sat down and just penned to a beat as it's playing and just didn't say a word, maybe mumble to myself quietly, but just really sat there and penned it down. Like I haven't done that in probably a year and a half, maybe two years. One thing I changed over the years and especially this year that I just started to get better, I was like, let me just put on a beat and just start singing and just start rapping, just jump instead mm -hmm. of feeling like all this fear and discomfort and writing down things. And I have like five lines down and I could have like 30 lines down, but I've contemplated in my head if that line's going to be good or not a million times. And now I barely have anything written down and I'm overthinking. And I, when I go to record it, it sounds forced and it doesn't even actually sound as good. It's like, 
I've just I've been trying to chase a feeling in the moment instead of let me sit down and write a song. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I found that it's helped me be able to tap in to that spontaneous energy and kind of hone in on it a lot more and grasp it instead of like it comes and it goes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So and it just like I got to feel something that moves me. It has to move me. I never want to sit down and like feel like I have to write to something or I, I have to write to this beat. Like I want to be like, holy shit, this is like exciting me. I'm feeling the fiery passion inside me right now. And I can uh, my mind is getting flooded with infinite amount of lyrics and words and cadences and flows. And I'm just going to sit here and wrap them and get them out. And like I said before, voice memos, something, even your mic, let it record and just do that. I'll get behind the mic and I'll let the beat loop five times. And I'll record basically like five different songs. Maybe I might keep the hook the same. By the fifth take, the hook is there. And the verses are just whatever. And I'll like literally take these six lines from this recording and then like these eight lines from that recording. I'll just put it all together. And then I'm like, I have a whole song. And it's crazy. It was just all from the moment. It was fresh, raw inspiration. It was fun. It was exciting. It's like you feel like you connect to something a bit deeper rather than sitting there sometimes trying to force a song because I've sat there trying to force a song plenty of times. I've made songs that way, but I'm like, they weren't even that good or they didn't give me the same feeling. So leave your comfort zone. It feels like a little weird, a little scary to do that. Even when you're with yourself, like you might feel like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't do it. Like I, this is so stupid. I sound stupid right now. Like this is like foolish, whatever, but it's not, it's actually very, very developing to your craft and to your ability to just easily come up with songs and not overthink. That's another thing too. It's like learning how to not overthink and kind of just get into a flow state. Well, sure. Meditations helped that a lot for me, honestly. I and like at what point? Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean I said, to no, you're good. I, was, I said meditations helped with that a lot too, just to keep like a clear flow state and not overthink and get overwhelmed. And then I just mm -hmm. said like I've been doing that every day. Is that's helped like I should have done. For sure, I heard good things about meditation actually. So it's crazy. Like, it's really well. I agree with you there and that's it. Right. Um, but far as um the whole comfort zone thing, like mm -hmm. at what point did you notice it was time to come out of your comfort zone? Like was there like a certain like a certain point where you said, I'm just gonna come out of this now? Yeah, it would just it would just uh being like it's time. Like I just it was watching a lot of Juice World studio sessions and watching them just rap for hours and mm -hmm. not write down the thing. Tory Lanez too, because he does the same thing. Sure. He just gets behind the booth and he just starts rapping and just like lets the beat go, lets the engineer do his thing. And before you know, it, he has a song and that just really inspired me. Lil Wayne too, because he was like, damn near the OG of that kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I want to do it. Like, I feel like I have something similar that these guys have and I feel like I can do it. And I, it's almost like deep down inside, I knew I had it, but I was afraid of it for some reason because it just felt uncomfortable. It just felt scary to just start doing that. You know, it felt like I don't want to get made fun of or I don't want to sound stupid. A lot of people don't want to sound stupid. They don't want to fuck up, but it's like, get comfortable with fucking up. Get comfortable with sounding stupid. Get comfortable with sounding doofy and feeling corny because it's going to help you overcome all that shit and then you're going to actually be nice at it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like mm -hmm. your fear controlling you, you face your fear, you feel through it enough to realize it's actually not controlling you or having any power over you. And now you can actually tap in and go deeper because you're more comfortable with yourself to even do it, allowing yourself to do it. For sure. Great yeah. insight on that as well. It's a lot of people Appreciate out it. here that's in the comfort comfort zone. I know I was like yeah. last Same year. Here. So, Definitely. Um just shows improvement as a person, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. For sure. All right. Thank you for that again, though. I appreciate you got it, bro. Right there. I'm here for it. For sure. Um, I think it's time that we should get into this question about this this five this five artists question. Oh shit, okay. Okay. <laughs> if you need more time, I could go to something else. But um No, we can do it now. For sure. Down now. All right, I can put that question up there for you. Who do you have as your top five artists? Like So now top five artists right now like that i vibe with right now or like all time kind of all thing. time like if you could just pick five that you okay, rock with or you can do right now like is this question isn't really like picky or anything it's just like the top i'll five. go all time i think all time is a bit more it's a bit easier because right now i don't really know um 
I should I could probably do both because there's always so many people I want to say. I'm like, I just want to share the love, but I gotta limit it to five. All right. Lil Wayne, because I've already mentioned him a billion times. Uh definitely Drake. Definitely Kanye. Uh hang on, let me think about this before I start just naming more names. Mm. Lil Wayne, Drake, Kanye. Hmm. See, like, if I'm looking at it as like the greatest, like I know like the Kendrick Cole, Jay Z, all of them, but I don't, I don't know how much I loved. Like, I loved their music, but it wasn't like as much as like the other three. So I'm kind of still thinking. You know what? Honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say Juice World and Tory Lanez. For sure. me, that's my top five. And uh, y'all heard his five, so that will be. Or actually, w- or or Big Sean, or Big Sean. Big Sean, I fucked with Big Sean heavy now for a while. Big Sean underrated, man, for sure. Oh, D, bro. <laughs> it, to me, he definitely deserves, like, top, if, if not top five, definitely top ten. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he could definitely be on top ten because he did his thing. Like, he made it imprint, and whether people realize that or not, it was almost like, I feel like, he, but he never fully got invited to the, invited to the table as those same guys, as, like, same mm-hmm. as, but in my eyes, he did for sure, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Sean fan for sure. Yeah, uh, you know. All right, uh, that segment will go, will be like on our social media, so like everyone okay. will be able to see what your your five cool. was. Because we used to do that when we first started, like asking mm-hmm. top fives, and then it translated somehow to like I asked this one question on a podcast I did because it was that the title was top five diss tracks ever. Uh, we'll talk about that another time, but like it transitioned to that, and then it transitioned back. So I don't even know if I'd be able to answer that question. <laughs> it was I, I had to really think and dig into my mind. I might not even be able to think of it on the spot. I was like, yeah. some Google's and remember some shit. <laughs> Literally, yeah, it was a, uh, it was definitely um different for sure. So that's a fun uh, question, though. Yeah, like it, 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 it was, it was kind of. It was kind of interesting, but I was just like, uh, yeah, maybe I should bring that back later on, though. But right. um, back to you, though. Appreciate you for answering that question. Got it. Again, Got it. this segment will be like on all, all of our platforms, of course. So um, appreciate you for answering that one. Um, my next question that I have that I'm going to put up eventually but I saw this on your page, and I was like, I don't think I've ever seen this on someone's page before that I podcasted with. Okay. I'm just gonna put it up because you you do like one on ones with people. Like I see it on I seen it on your page. You could oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna put that up. Am I giving some more insight on that? Like, because I saw I saw some are like thirty minutes, some are forty five. Like, yeah, you like could book a call with me because I like. My whole thing, aside from being an artist, is like I'm damn near like a life coach or like a spiritual coach or like a or like a a form of guidance to a lot of people. Because on TikTok, like a couple of years ago, that's originally how I really blew up. Like, of course, with music and stuff, but it was really it was like my message. It was like speaking about things like the pineal gland and our third eye and like what we're connected to in the universe, law of attraction, all this kind of shit. And everybody, we're in a time right now where it's like people have been finding out about this stuff of course for years but it's like mm-hmm. picking up now at a pace that like the world has never seen before and the world is changing and shit so my following my fan base group of supporters or whatever you want to call them especially on tiktok is like they look up to me for the wisdom that i speak for the knowledge that i have and the things that i say i've helped a lot of people through like shit like that like i've helped a lot of people under <clears throat> excuse me understand themselves and like in their paths more and what it means to have a spiritual awakening and how to handle it, things like that. So mm-hmm. I leave that open to people. If they feel like they like my content, they like who I am, they like the energy and the things that I'm saying, like they can talk to me directly one-on-one and then like ask whatever questions they have. They can get to know me more personally if they want. It's a way to just for them, just to connect with your fans and people who support you more, literally. For so, sure. So it's not, it's not just music. It's like the overall. Really everything. Overall. Okay. anything whatever they want it to be because it's really like when they're booking with me it's like 
for something that they have in mind already. You know what I'm saying? Of course, something to do with me and like they're coming to me about it. But yeah, anything, music, life, literally anything at all. Okay, and that's like true definition of an artist. Like, what's like the actual scope? Like, you're over here helping people out, not just with music, but like everything. Yeah, it's very fulfilling. It just makes everything better, to be honest. And what made you Knowing come up that. with that? having my own awakening on accident five years ago <laughs> because i was learning about certain things in the music industry I'm, i don't want to say too much about it but one thing led to another started learning about like all the symbolism and the all seeing eyes like that and mm -hmm. i learned that it all came from ancient times like ancient egypt and like a lot of these things were like sacred teachings and they were like things um that represented like a lot of power and wisdom and like divine energy and shit then I learned about the third eye, aka the pineal gland, and mm -hmm. what it does and what happens, and then literally just started to open <laughs> and it changed my life. And it was very scary at first, very traumatic, very dark, because I was awakened to all my shadows and all the things in my life that were the way they were. And it was a very dark journey, of course, also full of light and love and stuff, but it was also a very dark journey. Like I went through a very hard time in my life, especially for the past five years, just recently getting over it healing from a lot of physical, mental, emotional, spiritual trauma. And that is now I'm in this like such a great place. And I'm like, yo, I can really help the world. Like, cause I know what it's like to go through some really hard shit. I know what it's like to struggle, to, to not want to be here anymore, to wake up and your life is like a nightmare, but you keep going. And like, I've been told like, I'm, I'm a vessel for people who are like, who need hope or who need faith and like, who need inspiration to keep going we need that sense of purpose and sense of self-love that it's like it's okay if you're going through some shit like be kind to yourself be compassionate to yourself like it's gonna make you stronger like this shit's not gonna last like the grass is green on the other side better days are coming and they did and they do so that's like what i want to show people and just like help empower and awaken people awaken the power within them to actually know how powerful they are that they can create or get rid of anything in their life that they want or don't want kind of thing for sure. Um, and so do you get hit up a lot for for like these these, ser these services that you do, like far as like I, helping people? Not as much as I'd like to, but I feel like I also don't promote it often. Like I've maybe mm -hmm. promoted it once or twice and left it in my bio. But like it's something I should do more like when I make a TikTok video talking about like some spiritual stuff or like I should put in the in the caption or somewhere in the video, like one on one consultations link in my bio because then people will know. So it's like it's kind of been there but i haven't done it yet and i also feel like at the time that i created it too a lot of it just divine timing like when i created it at the time i felt like it could be something i wanted to do but mm -hmm. looking back in it i feel like maybe part of me also might not have been ready because of how much shit i was still dealing with within myself and struggling day to day it's like yo i'm like going through it right now but then how am i going to hop on a call with someone and, and try to help them or like try to be a like guide them when i need guidance myself right now so it was kind of like that so I feel like if anything now, if I were to start promoting that now and making it clear, out loud, visible to the world that I do that too, also with the place being that I'm in now, it would like definitely have to start getting people hitting me up and wanting to engage through that platform too. For sure. Yeah. Appreciate you answering uh, that question. Um, no doubt. <laughs> I believe that's all I have for these type of questions, but we're still going to carry on okay. with our conversation. So I'm going to take this off the board really quick. Okay. Next question I have for you. Um, far as like an artist and a producer, do, are you are you content with like being, are you independent or are you signed? Like if you were to choose a direction to go, which one would you actually choose? I never really asked that question. So I definitely want to be more so, at least right now. Right now, I want to be more so known as an artist rather than a producer. Mm -hmm. um, I want that part to like really shine. I don't want to be behind the scenes with this shit. Like I want to be like the spotlight. Like I want to be selling out shows, yeah, stadiums, sure. arenas, eventually like like venues selling out a thousand people, two thousand people, three thousand people, doing my own headlining shows, my songs. I'm the artist maybe i produce some of them too and like also produce stuff for other people like i'd be down for that but i think my main focus is definitely being an artist and really connecting and communicating with the world as far as am i signed right now i'm not signed i'm still independent because not definitely not time for me to sign yet i haven't blown up i haven't got anything crazy happening yet once that time comes that a song is starting to blow up and like people are starting to like you know find me and follow me and then suddenly you know blue checks start coming in like 
hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, it starts happening. This shit starts mm-hmm. becoming real. I don't think I'm going to sign because I think I could take that and leverage it a lot better and in a lot safer away from myself rather than going to like a major corporate label, especially mm-hmm. just with all the stories I've heard in the past and all the things yeah, I've learned sure. about record labels and looking at the people now like Russ and Tory Lanez and a lot of other people who went independent too, just because of how kind of fucked up labels are and stuff. And, you know, it's like, if I, if I were to sign though, I would make sure I have enough leverage that it's like, I can retain 90% of my freedom. And maybe that other 10% is just like, we'll split this revenue on like the albums that we drop together and that's it. Otherwise I'm keeping my catalog. I'm dropping music when I want, how I want, uh, talking about what I want. Like I still have creative control. I don't ever want to be in a position where I can't be myself anymore. Mm-hmm. And if I go against being myself or if I go against not being myself, then I'm in danger. I'm in trouble. So definitely picking like I'm picking and choosing. Like if let's say if Russ wanted to sign me because Russ is independent and mm-hmm. he has his own label with his friend Bugus Diamond that they started together. If they wanted to sign me, cool. Because I know there's no big corporate major label backing them that's gonna like yeah. low key fuck me in the ass if I do some stupid shit. Or not some stupid shit if I just speak my truth, you know what I'm saying? So it's all about just being intuitive, having clear discernment and knowing who you're around, what you're around and what you're getting yourself into, I would say. Sure. Uh, you yeah. know, you know, maybe trying to take your your catalog and your masters. I heard yeah. I heard I heard some interesting stories about that and I was like, yo, that's wild. I'm telling you, it's it's dark. <laughs> it's not cool, bro. It's just <laughs> fucked up. Definitely. But people are starting to notice now. That's why a lot of people are just going independent. Like they're realizing they don't need that anyways, like a lot more freedom now. There's a lot just more to utilize now in our own hands. Especially with the whole streaming thing. Like you I feel like you don't really some people yeah. need it and some people don't need labels, but like I know a lot of independent artists. I would say like I would rather have like I don't wanna when I say independent, I don't mean like forever. I just wanna be like I'm the only one ever recording me, ever producing for me, ever making my cover art. I set up my own shows and I shoot my music. No, like eventually, like I want to have teams. I want to have a production team. I want to have uh, a tour management team who like helps me set up booking agent, helps me set up shows, and helps me set up a tour. I want to have management who's going to help, you know, send my shit to radio and pay the people who are at radio to put my shit on the radio instead of being, but just not being in a label. Cause like, I just want the connections, but I still want to have the freedom and integrity. For sure. I yeah. feel like that's that's kind of what people are doing now, though. Now that they yeah. see like what's actually going on at these labels. Yeah. So, because uh, they, they were saying like, um, they are saying like if Drake ever goes independent, like sober. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> Russ said that too. He said it in an interview. He was like, imagine if Drake went independent. What, like, why would, yeah, I don't think that could happen though. <laughs> I'm not sure with him. And who well, he says, yeah, he's like well, he, he's a cash money. He's with you know, he's with those guys. I'm not gonna say too much. But, yeah, for sure. Great yeah. insight, though. Great yeah, insight, yeah, for, for, sure, for sure. For sure. All right, um, I'm gonna hop into my next question, more so okay. on the streaming side of things, like far as music. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a favorite streaming platform? Like, are you on? Are you are you like all of them, or are you are you on one side versus the other side that you like better? Using them or for like tracking my or, own like for, for your for your numbers and stuff like for like okay. people listening to your music. I would say Spotify, just because mm-hmm. it's kind of like the most glorified. It's like the one that people. It's the most hyped up. It's like the one that people at the end of the year Spotify wrapped up. You know, everybody's like looking at that. Usually, I I check those numbers every day, see how my songs are doing. I check Apple Music too, though. Everything else, YouTube, SoundCloud. SoundCloud, I don't check as often, but every now and again, I'll go into it and I'll see, like, if, is there something happening there, which I think anything can still happen on any platform. You just need to be consistent and have good music and make sure people are hearing it, get it out there properly. But um, I would say, like, Spotify and also YouTube. YouTube. Because a lot of people go to YouTube to listen to music, too, and, like, I'll notice some of my songs that went not even semi-viral, like, semi, 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 semi-viral, like, maybe like a few thousand, 10,000, 30,000 streams, whatever it was like on YouTube, like a lot of numbers too. And then you get the likes and you get the comments. So like you can see more of like who your supporters are and who your fan base is rather than just the numbers. 
you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like more mm-hmm. personal. So obviously Spotify and YouTube, I fuck with, but I fuck with all them. For Apple sure. Music. Not, I mean, not like I don't check Deezer. I don't check Tidal. Like I don't check those numbers, but I know they're still being used, but probably nowhere near as much. Mm-hmm. But I just, I guess I just check the big ones. So your top three probably like Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Music? Yeah, definitely. For sure. Uh, yeah. What about, uh, how, how you feel about uh, putting like snippets on TikTok? Do you do that? Definitely. Like, That's very helpful. That is extremely helpful. TikTok is the number one discovery platform right now. And it's like, there's one song that I have that it's like pretty much every time I post it, it gets like a few hundred likes, thousands of views, and like I'll go check the numbers on that song streaming platforms, and like on that day it'll be like it just got like an extra a hundred to three hundred streams. So I'm like, it's crazy. Like that is a really good way to get fans. Like people are on TikTok, of course for entertainment, but it's just such a great place to just blow up your content. Could blow up if it's good, if mm-hmm. the quality is good, if the song is good. Like you just got to keep doing it, and you got to find different ways to do it. Be consistent. For sure. And yeah. like another question about that, like how often do you think an artist should post on like something like TikTok or Instagram? Every day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm perfect either. Cause like I have, you know, moments where it's like, I don't post for a few days. I might not even post for a week. Like I've been meaning to post content this whole week. And then it's like, I don't know what happens. Like I'll fucking go to make it and I'm not posting it. Like, whatever, I end up doing something else, but definitely every day, even if it's just one time, one post, post something. Like when I first blew up on TikTok, that it was because I was being consistent. It was also early, it was in 2020 and we were in a pandemic. So that of course helped everybody's home on their phones, but it was also, I was putting out good content with a good message, but I was doing it consistently because if I didn't do it four to five times a day, four to five videos a day, every single day, for like a month, that wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. It was like two weeks into a month, and those second two weeks of that month, like shit started really blowing up, and that's when like hit. I reached over a million likes. I got like over one hundred seventy thousand followers, and it just like went crazy. And then now I have all these supporters. Where it's like maybe not every post blows up, but every few posts definitely like go semi viral, blow up, or there's something happening where I'm like, okay, it's not just like this is dead and nothing's happening. Like I could see these people are still here. You just gotta cater to them, mm-hmm. give them what they want. Sure. It's all about the uh, consistency. Yeah. And besides um, TikTok, do you do you rock with the reels, like the Instagram reels, the Facebook reels? Like yeah, I, I post them, them. YouTube Shorts too. I haven't seen too much from them though. I feel like reels are cool. I feel like they start getting better once you actually really start gaining a fan base. Like, let's say I had a song that was already starting to blow up, and now people are finding me, and there's a buzz <laughs> around my name. Then I start posting reels on that song. Then it starts getting known because people are already knowing it. Because the way I, I see reels to be, it's like very trendy. Like TikTok feels like a lot more original content now, uh, mm-hmm. content now rather than trends. And I feel like reels is like mostly from what I see is like everybody just goes hard on trends on there in their niche, whatever their niche is. But I feel like to get good numbers on there, you already want to have like some kind of buzz going. And where are you going to get that? From TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, most likely, it's not the only way, of course, but it's the easiest way. I don't it's the most common really... way, for sure. Yeah, like I don't, there's really no other platform where you could just your your life could change overnight because a post blew the fuck up, and now the world wants to know who the fuck you are and what else you got. Like it could happen on reels. It just I feel like it's a lot less likely. TikTok, they like got it because they're the original. Mm-hmm. Everything else is just like the TikTokification of these platforms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like the reels will take longer. TikTok, it'll probably take like one or two days or maybe hours, depending what it is. Yeah, it could be quick. Yeah. Or sometimes it won't even be right away. It might be after a week or shit starts blowing up. I've had things mm-hmm. like that before too, where it was moving slow at first. And then like after a few days to a week, I'm noticing that post is now suddenly going crazy. Or even months later, it's so weird. Like you never know. Shit blows up more than once sometimes. For sure. Yeah, yeah I rock with TikTok. Like I've been seeing a lot of dope artists on there. And it's like. Saying. I was like, this this has to be the top platform right now because yeah, you could post the same content on like, on like Instagram or Facebook Reels, and you wouldn't get the same reaction. I think so. Uh, yeah, TikTok just has a, I don't know, I guess like a more engaging, loyal user base. Like who like when they find shit that they, that they like, they'll actually leave a comment. They'll actually let you know. They'll actually follow you. They'll actually fuck with you. Like 
It's different. Mm-hmm. There's more love on there. I feel like people care more in a sense, or For don't sure. care more. They're just brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Either or, but they're just out there. They're expressive. Put it that way. For sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was some great insight on that as well. I will be titling this conversation after the video is done, so that way people know. Yeah, what yeah definitely. About. That makes sense. For sure. I have a question for you. So I was um, someone replied on the story that I posted that I'll be talking to you, right? Uh, Mr. Thought Provoker again. Um, so I was just like, he's like, oh, finally you're doing a podcast. I was like, all right, sir. It's because I call I call him Mr. Five Albums. That's what I call him. Like Mr. Five Albums. Yeah, bro, be putting out five albums a year. But um, that was crazy. Yeah, he puts out a lot of fucking him and Elliot both. They put out a lot of fucking music. Like shout out to them because their catalog is pretty crazy. Yeah, shout out to like the bros. when the time comes that like one of their songs or something some shit like really starts blowing up. Like they have a whole catalog of fans that are just ready to dive into, which is fucking sick. For sure. Well, yeah. we see a song with uh with you and Thought Provoker, you and Elliot, in the near future. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Me and Elliot, we have a, f- a few things that we worked on in the past. Um, they're kind of just sitting around right now. We haven't touched up on them so much and stuff. And then we went through a phase where like we weren't really talking that much anymore. Like whatever, not because of anything, just because of like life and just Busy. whatever the yeah. fuck. So, but I think no, definitely, I definitely want to tap in with them make some new stuff something fresh something new of this energy and not like not even so much revisit old things and old songs just because i feel like i've evolved and changed so much as a person Mm -hmm. and healed a lot of parts of myself that i feel like when i was around them i was just still very um in my box in my shell to myself and i was like almost like afraid to collaborate or like didn't want to or like just wanted to kind of be myself but i'm in a place now where i'm like kind of just more open and I want to collaborate with more people, do more things. And that's what I've been doing and just keep going. So I think so. Definitely in the near future, get some element J X thought provoker X Elliot major content out there, music out there, some dope shit, maybe produced by me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That'll, that'll be, yeah. Uh, that'll be dope. Cause you know how someone drops Facts. a lot of music, but um, yeah, right. I forgot to ask this question. If someone wants to find you on Apple music and Spotify, Spotify, like how would they find you? Like, what's the name under? Is it Element J? Is that what Element it's Space J? So the word Element Space Letter J. And then the thing is, though, <laughs> there's another Element J. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know who <laughs> had the name first. I don't know, but all I know is that when you search my name, like usually I'm the one who pops up most relevantly, like as far as like social medias and platforms and things that like you can actually look up and like find like videos of myself personality a person like me so i credit myself as og but there's another one and it's not me so there's like a bunch of songs that are under the name element j that's kind of annoying like sometimes they pop up and like when i'm looking at my streams i'm like these are literally three songs of the other element j that aren't even mine <laughs> it's <laughs> counting onto my shit like they're honestly they're lower than the other songs but no, it's just Element Space J on every platform. SoundCloud, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, everywhere. You'll find my shit. That literally made sense because when I was making a story earlier, like I typed it in mm. and I was comparing it to what I saw on my phone and I was like, what the hell is this? I was like, I was like it's, hey. I'm glad you can tell the difference though. I was able to tell the difference. I was just like, yeah, uh, yeah I'm just going to type the song that I want because this is this. This operation right now is not working. Out so <laughs> oh uh, man, yeah, I know. I'm working on that right now. Um, yeah, do like some legal shit and whatever. But uh, getting down to that should be settled soon. Definitely should be settled soon. Just waiting for some like paperwork things to go through, trademark mm-hmm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then get that handled. Funny that and, you uh, speak on paperwork, though. I have a question mm-hmm. about that actually. Sure. Like. As an artist, like how important do you think paperwork is? Because I know I hear some people that like when they sign contracts, like mm-hmm. they don't read like the fine print. And they just sign yeah. it they see the number. Yeah. Like, oh, like if they're signing like a deal or something. Yeah. Yeah, like they might they might get uh you know blinded and excited by oh signing you to my label, here's this chain and 
here's this fucking amount of money and here's this big gifts and take you on my private jet, see how we're living, so I'm going to sign you. And you get blinded by all that shit and you don't even read what's actually in front of you or have it professionally read and translated to you by a lawyer and someone who knows mm-hmm. what they're talking about. So just know, just read your shit. Don't, just don't make impulsive, quick decisions like that. You know what I'm saying? Unless you know what you're getting into and it is exactly what it seems like. You know what I'm saying? But oftentimes, especially with major labels, it's not. So you definitely just want to get that checked out or even if let's like let's say it's not a label because i don't have any label experience i haven't got that point yet right Mm -hmm. let's say i'm working with a producer and i maybe just met them and it's like there's some good vibes going on i don't really know them like that and like we want to drop some songs together and they're like oh just let's just drop them now like don't worry about it like we'll worry about that stuff later you can do it if it's truly mutually genuine and good Mm -hmm. intentions but sometimes it's not and you end up finding that out later the hard way, like down the line with like money issues and legal issues and royalty splits because, all oh, because you just didn't make a simple, literally easy to read agreement that you could type up yourself and that you both signed just so you know that you're safe, even just in case, you know what I'm saying? So I'd recommend that too, because I haven't collaborated with a lot of people, but I feel like whoever I do, especially if I don't really know them like that, I'll definitely just want to have something very simple, even something like I said, that I could type up myself that is like, the terms are very simple. Everything is mutual and the awareness on both ends is mutual as far as what's happening. Boom, we both signed it. So we're both good. We're both protected in case I tried to fuck you over or you tried to fuck me over. You know what I'm saying? So just be safe. Play it smart. For sure. Yeah. Y'all hear that? Sign that paperwork or read your paperwork. Have some type yeah. of agreement. Something. So just what. And know what it is. Like, don't like to sign like understand it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah because I, I i've heard someone tell me and they're like yeah but we're homies so i was like uh, i don't know i've seen uh i've seen homies go to war of, over money bro so that's what i'm saying like if shit were to change like sometimes you don't know like i also like there's like two sides of me who think a little differently like, there's like the one side that's like a little more just careful and like play it safe but then there's another side of me that's like i feel like my discernment with people who I know I'm like this with that mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about certain shit. I'm like, maybe there's like a handful of people who aren't exception, but like the other 90%, like, even if it feels cool, it's like, let's still do paperwork just to be professional and smart about it. You know what I'm saying? But then again, like, who knows? Cause like people change, let's say shit <laughs> blows up and now money's coming in and fans are coming in. People start getting like, like clouded in their mind and like, just like all the fame or whatever the fuck it's like shit changes. So you never know just have the paperwork. It's simple. Takes ten minutes. <laughs> literally, you could do that on yeah. yourself. Literally, That's what I'm saying. Because as long as there's a mutual agreement and you both signed it, you're good. It doesn't have to be some crazy fifty page contract. Like something mm-hmm. simple. Parks are being independent too. You could just do something simple. You have proof. You have evidence. It's exactly what you need mm-hmm. to sure. keep you safe. That's so, yeah. on that one. I feel like yeah. I've been hesitated right now. That's what's up. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Far as, I guess, far as like management, will you ever do that one day or will you just yeah. like do kind of just... I'm kind of doing that right now. Okay. Yeah, so I kind of have someone right now who they, they, they've been kind of spectating on me for a while, seeing what I'm doing. They've seen me progress and stuff and they're at a point now where it's like, all right, like I want to help you. Like they've wanted to help me, but now it's like, dude, you fucking got it. Like all you need is like some publicity and like, you'll see like you're, the world's gonna fuck with you. So it's like, we're working on that now with certain things and like getting myself out there, setting up like meetings, interviews, investing money into certain areas to actually make, you know, people see my shit and stuff like that. So that's something I'm I'm messing around with now, getting into now, I'm ready for it now. Cause I, feel, I didn't feel like I was ready a year or two ago or prior to that, I was still developing, but now I feel like I've developed into the person, at least foundation wise, cause the sky's the limit. I can keep growing from here on out, but. Mm-hmm. I've developed into someone that I'm comfortable and confident with presenting to the world as far as myself as a personality and myself musically. So now it's like, all right, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? For like sure. now I'm manageable. I feel like. Okay. And you've known, yeah. you've known this person for a while or they've been following yeah, you for a minute? Not too long. I've, I've known them for like four or five years, going on five years. Okay. So, That's so sad. Yeah. There's, there's, there's mutual respect. There's mutual love. There's mutual genuine intentions there's like it's not shady i would want i would not you don't want someone to be your manager who's going to be shady and shit like if someone's going to be your manager or at least 
want to play the role as a manager, do things to help as a manager would. You want to make sure you trust them, you're comfortable with them, you're cool with them, you know them, and it's just genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want any shady intentions and shit like that. So for sure, you don't you don't yeah. want to uh, you don't want those those managers that take all the money. You don't want that. Yeah, or like they <laughs> might they might put you in a position that you don't even want to be in because of like it's like money, like literally because it's a good look or whatever the fuck it like benefits somebody else. So mm -hmm. or them for sure. Facts. All right, um, I'm gonna wind down with this next question that I have. Okay. As far as like social media, uh, like I know. I know you've seen all these people that do like their lives, they'll do like little studio sessions on their lives. Like, will mm -hmm. you ever do something like that? Or do yeah. you do something like that? I do sometimes. Sometimes I'll go, um, I go live on TikTok sometimes and I'll just record songs. I made like a few songs on TikTok live before. But I think I was thinking, I was talking to my boy the other day and I was like, yo, I feel like I should start streaming on Twitch or something. And I was about to say that, yeah. Just start showing them my process in the studio because I feel like. Like, and I just saw a 555 on the clock, right? It was 105.55. So that's a whole synchronicity, right? That's a breadcrumb from the universe that's like, yo, <laughs> 2 2 type shit, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I feel like I want to do that just because it's like, it's more content. It's more ways to develop fans and people to see you as a person and feel your personality and watch you do what you do. Like, as an artist, looking up to artists that I love, I love watching their studio sessions. I love watching Juice World studio sessions. I love watching Tory Lanez in the studio. Any artist who I fuck with, I'm like, I want to like see and get as much of them as I can as a person, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It just, it just makes a more deeper connection, like fan to artists, you know what I'm saying? So definitely, I think that's in the work to so just something I started thinking about. So now it's something I'm just going to look into more, see what kind of equipment I need. And I think I'm going to start doing that in the near future for sure. More, more personal content as far as how mm -hmm. I actually do things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Twitch is a, uh, Twitch is like an amazing platform to do that. Yeah, I've never, sure. I've never really seen a, a live on TikTok. Like, mm -hmm. uh, is it is it similar to like an Instagram live? Because I know you need a thousand followers to go live on TikTok. Uh, or I think I guess that's the format. It's actually pretty good though. Like people's lives on TikTok go really fucking crazy, and they people like if you're doing really insane numbers, like you'll get decent amount of money. Like I've seen, there's a few people like, and I look at by the end of the live, they have like three million likes just on the live. And like total people in and out might have been like twenty to fifty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand people, like even more. It's like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's good, but it's better when you have an active following and mm -hmm. a good amount of people, and you have a buzz, and like you're already getting posted or like blowing up. Of course, go live. Also, don't wait for that moment to go. Like if you have enough followers to do it, go on live just to do it. It's practice. You know what I'm saying? You get more comfortable. You get a feel for it, so that by the time that point comes, you're just like you already know what to do. You're comfortable. You're doing your thing. So yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm going to give you my last question of the night. Okay. Well, two. I like two more questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the first one, um, you know, 2022's coming to an end. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Pretty, pretty, pretty quickly, actually. I felt like I felt like COVID just started two days ago. Like that's how fast. Think it so. Was. Damn. I, feel, I feel like I feel like this long this year was actually a long year, but now it's the end of it. Now it's just like holy shit, it's really it's over. <laughs> now it feels that way, but I, I didn't feel like it went by that quick actually. Yeah, at um, least for me personally. Yeah, for sure. I I just felt like it was flying, and I was just like, yo, like this is wild. Yeah. But on to the question. So for 20, 2023 is coming up. Did you do you like make like yearly goals as an artist? Uh, I think we lost them or something. Uh, yeah, we'll try to get him back, but I feel like we just lost him right now. Let me see if I can get him back really quick. Uh, bear with me for a second. Oh, he's back. There you go. Oh, it just happened. It just like. <laughs> I literally just crashed. I was like, what? I thought yeah. my phone was going to die. And I was like, no, I played better. Yeah, I, I, li I literally just was about to message you. But um, what I was saying was, like, do, as an artist, do you make any, did you make any go upcoming goals, like, for 2023? Like, far as, uh, like, music-wise? I haven't wise? down 
not yet. I think I've just been, even just in general, I've been having like a lot of new ideas coming in and things that I want to start doing, like new ventures I want to take on or just new ways of doing things that I've thought about. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll write them down. I do like the new year resolutions, like things sometimes, but I feel like it doesn't matter unless like you really do it, you stay consistent with it. So I'm like, I always say like, just start doing things now first and then you can always do that. But definitely i think one of the things that have been in my mind for a while now is more visuals more music videos and dropping music more consistently and not just like dropping a song once and then not dropping for like another three months so at least one song a month it's like minimum okay. and like maybe a music video every other month something like that i just want to be more consistent and actually have a catalog that's like up to date and fresh with the way that i actually sound now so 2023 and really just starting that now like making that goal happen now doing it now instead of waiting is like my thing right now i'd say just more sure. catalog more visuals more consistency and putting myself out there the best that i can you know all right for sure appreciate that yeah definitely um last question last question for you this is more so like on a project side like do you okay. have do you have a favorite project that you worked on or like one that you like hmm. had a, a real good time on that you're like yo like that was pretty dope like uh, oh, i enjoyed working on that yeah i would say a few songs right now that i got in the vault that are not out yet that i made recently just because the process of making them was just so just easy effortless naturally flowing mm -hmm. and fun it didn't feel like a job and a task and like something hard it was just very easy to do and they came out fire or um, I'll, honestly, a lot of the times what helped me broke me, what broke me out of my comfort zone was like telling my friends come to the studio. And this is like a year ago, because it was kind of like just coming out of a point, coming out of a point where I was like going through a really hard time. And I was like, yo, I just want to like laugh and have fun because I haven't in so long. So I'm like, come to the studio and let's just record like stupid nonsense songs. Like, let's just get behind the mic and just freestyle shit, just whatever comes. Just let's just have fun. But it was actually so memorable and it was actually so developing to me as an artist because it was like although we were joking i was doing things that i would be afraid to normally do as if i was in a room with a serious artist because it was like there was more vulnerability there was more openness there was more like just be yourself and even if you sound stupid just do it like and it helped actually helped me grow a lot and just having like a few of my boys come to the studio and like we just make these fuck around songs like they weren't actual projects but those were monumental moments to me in my life, especially developing as an artist, because they actually really helped me like get out of my comfort zone and have fun doing this and just tap into something new in the moment with that I've never done before and just have uh -huh. fun with it, literally learning how to have fun with it. So I hope that answers your question kind of like Oh it did for sure. Okay. Okay, cool. Like it, it, it gave <laughs> it gave great insight. It made me think like think about if it was if it was like a full studio session recorded like a vlog or something i was like yo that would have been dope yeah it's like in or even like a stream that would have been dope that would have been funny people would have been laughing their asses off watching that shit because mm. like we have fun, like when my friends come to the studio or like a couple of my friends who they'll come here we'll hang out record some shit like we like we're dying laughing the whole time <laughs> and we're like mm. making these stupid little songs but it's like fun and it's developing and it's actually productive and it's like and it's just fun and it's enjoyable to watch it's very contagious so if I start streaming, I think that would definitely be like another thing that I do, just like sessions like that, like fun sessions and shit like that, because people love to watch that. For sure, especially on Twitch and TikTok. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm not sure about Instagram. Instagram's kind of weird, but um, yeah. Twitch and TikTok, though. Maybe YouTube, yeah. too. Maybe. I don't. I don't yeah, I don't like know. Uh, YouTube shorts are just like uploading maybe like a segment of the live, like 45 minutes of it or 30 minutes of it on there. Like, that's a good way, too, because people. I don't have Twitch, but I go to YouTube to watch people's Twitch uploads. Mm -hmm. Tory Lanez is one of them. For sure. So YouTube yeah, okay. came out with this feature where you can uh, go live with somebody. Oh, it did? Like, yeah. So it's like, so say if you started a, a YouTube live stream, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this option where you, you select go, go live with so-and-so and it happens. I haven't done it yet, but I think for my next podcast, I'm going to try it. But um, I think that'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be so trying. That's, that that's definitely i would say twitch TikTok, and youtube instagram facebook or like whatever but um yeah, yeah that's kind of where i'm at with it 
Um, those are my questions. I'm going to hand it over to you for last. Anything else you want to say before we end? Uh, my new song, Beyond Myself, is out now. You can stream it everywhere. Produced by Internet Money's vendor. Just newly got signed. And uh, yeah, if you want to follow me on all social media platforms, it's elementj underscore on Instagram. On TikTok, it's Element J. Twitter, along my active, it's Element J underscore. YouTube is Element J. All streaming platforms is Element J. And uh, yeah, I think that's that. For sure. Uh, again, I appreciate you for uh, joining me on the podcast today. Absolutely. It was dope. Well, I appreciate you having me for real. For sure. Oh, Talk yeah. soon. And yes, you enjoy the rest of your night, sir. You too, man. It's been a pleasure. All right. Have a good Peace. one.